Here we're going to go over a brief overview of fatty acid synthase before jumping into the more detailed mechanism of how fatty acids are synthesized. So if you take a look at fatty acid synthase, it's actually a cool looking enzyme. Uh, it has these you know, various domain sites, and at each domain, something different is going to happen. So let's just go over the domains that are on fatty acid synthase. Now, domain one is called the KS domain. The KS domain, also uh, the long form name, is beta keto acyl ACP synthase. Now that's a mouthful, so we'll just call it KS from now on. At the KS domain, let's just say the KS domain is right over here. At that domain, we are going to form a new carbon-carbon bond. Now, when we talk about fatty acid synthesis, we are taking two carbon units that are coming from malonyl-CoA, and we're adding that on to our growing fatty acid chain. Now, each time we add a malonyl-CoA, two carbons of malonyl-CoA, onto a growing fatty acid chain, we're forming a new carbon-carbon bond because we add a malonyl-CoA, we add another malonyl-CoA, so we're forming new carbon-carbon bonds. And that's going to happen at the KS. Then we have the DH. The DH is the beta-hydroxyl ACP dehydrogenase. And at this domain, we are going to remove H2O. Now, think back to uh, the steps of fatty acid synthesis. Recall that we have a step, we have a intermediate, called the beta-hydroxyl ACP. When the beta-hydroxyl ACP is converted into enol ACP, we must remove a water to create that double bond in enol. So that happens at the DH. Next, we have the KR domain. The KR domain is called the beta-ketoacyl ACP reductase, and it binds NADPH. Now, we also have another reductase, and this reductase is called the enol ACP reductase, or the ER. So how do we distinguish between AR, KR, and ER? They, because they both bind NADH, NADPH. One thing we need to make note of is that the ER domain, the e enol ACP reductase, is going to be used in our final step of fatty acid synthesis, when we are going from enol ACP to fatty acyl ACP, that final reduction will happen at the ER with the help of NADPH. Whereas the KR is going to reduce uh, keto acyl ACP into beta hydroxy acyl ACP. So uh, to, to, sum it, to sum it up, essentially both the KR and the ER have different substrate specificities. They both bind NADPH, but they have different substrate specificities. This one is going to bind enol. This one's going to bind ketoacyl ACP. Now, let's go to this one, the TE, the thioesterase. The, th the thioesterase is going to release the free fatty acid from ACP. We'll take a look at what ACP is in a second, but essentially once fatty acid synthase, so remember, these are all domains on this overall enzyme. So once our fatty acid synthase is done creating our fatty acid, this enzyme is going to cleave it off. Next, we have the MAT domain. Uh, the long form is called malonyl acetyl coa ACP transferase. That's also a mouthful. But the name of e, this domain and all of these domains describes that shorthand form uh, and what's happening in that area. So malonyl acetyl ACP transferase, what does it do? It brings in new carbons, whether that's malonyl CoA and, or acetyl CoA. So recall that when fatty acid synthesis starts, you bring in an initial acetyl CoA. You remove the CoA, you attach that acetyl group to the KS and the malonyl CoA will lose its CoA and it's going to also come to the KS and that's where we're going to see our new carbon-carbon bond form. But before this malonyl and acetyl CoA come to the KS, where are they coming from? Mat, the mat domain is essentially going to pick up malonyl CoA or acetyl CoA 
uh, depending on what step we are at, and it's going to pick it up and it's going to pass it on to the Ks. So essentially, the whole function of MAT is taking those carbon units and bringing them to Ks. So we've gone over the ER. Next, let's go over the ACP. The ACP is the acyl carrier protein. It's essentially a flexible arm that keeps the substrate bound. Now what happens is that the ACP is going to essentially bind to uh, the substrate and it's going to act as this arm that moves the substrate from uh, one area of the domain to another area of the domain. And we'll go over that in more detail later. But these are all the domains found on fatty acid synthase. And that's this enzyme right over here. Now let's go over the, what ACP is, because ACP, ACP plays an important role. We can think of ACP to be similar to coenzyme A, because it looks similar to coenzyme A. So we have this 4-phosphopantothene uh, molecule, and that's essentially this molecule over here. We'll zoom out so we can see it in full. But essentially, see, we have this ACP right here, and this is our pantothenic acid. This is our phosphate, and it's attached to a serine side chain on that ACP. Thus, the overall name is 4-phosphopantothene. Now, ACP is a protein. Remember when we went over the name, it said ACP is an acyl carrier protein. And this protein has this long arm. And this long arm can bind to malonyl-CoA right over here. Now remember, coenzyme A looks, coenzyme A's uh, business end or the area that's functional looks exactly like this. So this is where malonyl CoA is, is able to bind. Uh, and this portion here is the same as acetyl CoA. Not acetyl CoA, pardon me, I meant to say coenzyme A. So this is ACP. It's a protein. It has this long uh, arm that is going to act as a flexible arm to move within these domains, and it's going to bind the malonyl CoA right over here. And that's essentially a brief overview of fatty acid synthase. Let's just go over one more thing. Let's talk about FAS1 and FAS2. FAS1 is uh, going to be found in uh, vertebrates, whereas FAS2 is found in plants and bacteria. Now, FAS1, it can only produce fatty acids that are 16 carbons in length, whereas FAS2 can produce various different time, various different types of fatty acids. They could be saturated, they could be um, polyunsaturated, monounsaturated, they could be nine carbon, six carbons, so forth. But FAS1 can only produce saturated 16 carbon fatty acids, and it's found in vertebrates. Here we have plants and animals. And that's essentially the main key point difference between FAS1 and FAS2. Remember, FAS stands for fatty acid synthase. And that is just a brief overview of fatty acid synthase.